The next step after you get your car is called de-icing. Okay, I'm using an acronym here, and I'll just let you in on a few of those. When I say EV, I mean an electric vehicle. Same thing with BEV, battery electric vehicle. When I say the term ICE, what I mean is an internal combustion engine. That's what drives your typical gasoline or diesel vehicle. So our first step here is going to be taking off all the components that are in that gasoline related system. But before we do that, let's take a look at what a Geo Metro looks like when it still has its original engine, transmission, gas tank, all those things. And then we can identify those parts, decide what things we need to take out, what things we can keep, what things we wanna sell, and make our money back on what we paid for the car in the first place. To do that, we're gonna go over to my brother-in-law's place where he just happens to have a Geo Metro, almost exactly like mine, only still running on gas. Now before we start taking all the combustion engine components out of the car, let's first identify those, see what those all look like, what they do, what things we might be able to pull out. Now since my car is already converted to electric, what we're going to do is use the stunt double here. Uh, this car is a Gen 2 Geo Metro, it's a 5 speed with a 3 cylinder engine, so it's basically the same make, model, and options as the car that I've already converted. So let's take a look at some of the parts on this one to start with. Another thing you're going to want to do is to use a tape measure and just measure uh, the distance between the road and some fixed part of the car right above the tire. Just measure up to the fender and mark down that number. That way, uh, depending on the weight of the batteries that you add, where you put them in, you want to be able to get as close to that number as you can later so that the car is as close to stock as it can be. Now, you might have to modify the suspension to make that all work, but we'll cover that a little later in this video. Now, in any car, you're going to find some information inside the door frame. So if we just open the car, Right in here, you're going to see a tag, and on there is going to be the information about uh, tire pressure, where your car was made. But what we're really looking for here is information on the car's weight, its gross vehicle weight, and its cargo and person uh, carrying capabilities. And what we want is just to make sure that the car is going to have the capability to carry the additional weight of the batteries and components that we're going to be adding. So if you take a look at the weights that are on here, you just want to make sure that the weight of your battery pack is going to fit within the limitations of the vehicle. And for example, on this car, it says that it's uh, uh, maximum load in pounds is 688 for the occupants plus the cargo. So we're going to want to make sure to have a battery pack that weighs less than that. And then, of course, uh, netting in removing of the other components, such as the uh, the engine, the gas tank, and other items like that. Now here's something else we're not going to need. The uh, gas tank, gas cap, um, we're not going to have a gas tank on here so we can remove this and put this to other better uses such as putting our charging port right there. Now this car is a hatchback and there's a couple of things that I really like about that. One is that it does give you a lot of potential cargo room. You really can fit a lot in here. The back seat flips down, and we've got a lot of room to be able to work with here. Now also in the back of this car, there's a cover that we flip up, and that's normally where the tire and jack would go, but there's a fair amount of room. So if we take out the jack and spare tire, we have space that potentially could be used for batteries, it could be used for a battery charger, or a lot of other potential uses in an electric car. Uh, so again, this is some space that we might find real handy. Now under the hood of the car, there's a lot of things that we probably don't need anymore, but if they work perfectly well, the best thing you can do is take them out and sell them, help pay for the project. In my case, uh, just pulling out the engine and a few other components paid for the car itself. Uh, a lot of the main things we can see right here uh, to start with is the car's original 12 volt battery. We're gonna keep that because that's still going to run the headlights, the brake lights, your radio, all of those sorts of things. Now the Metro has a very small radiator, it's just right here, and we're not going to need that at all. So we can remove that and sell it. The engine itself, in this case it's a three cylinder, um, runs, pull it out, sell it. Um, we can either pull that out by itself or we can remove it at the same time as the transmission. The transmission we're going to keep and reuse. Now there's really not a whole 
heck of a lot of other things up here. Uh, up here, we've got the brakes. We're going to keep all that, except that is power brakes. So we're going to have to figure out a vacuum for making the power brakes work. Um, then coming off of the engine, we've got the exhaust components. All of that's going to come off as well. So once again, just a little overview of the engine compartment. We've got the windshield washer motor, the air cleaner for the engine, uh, exhaust manifold. All, that, all of this is coming out. Brake system, original battery, radiator. Uh, remember that we're going to want to keep our uh, windshield washer fluid. Uh, down here is for coolant. We're not going to be using any coolant anymore, so that can come out as well. And another thing you're going to want to check for is any known issues in your particular vehicle. Now, it's known that in Geo Metros, they're a unibody design, and often this part right here will rust through. This is just in front of where the drive shaft for the front wheels goes through. Uh, this part of the frame is known to rust. So in my case, when I had the engine and transmission out of the way, I started poking that real hard with the screwdriver. And even though it didn't look bad from the outside, it was completely rusted from the inside. And on my car, that did need some repair there that uh, required some welding. Fortunately, my friend Tim is a nice small guy, and we just put him in there and had welded up, put some black paint on there, and we were ready to roll again.